Hello friends and welcome back to Cinephile Saturday. We are going through the Alien franchise and the next up is Prometheus, the prequel. And uh, I think when the movie was released, I think the tagline was the beast is cooked. I think the, the tag that was for Ridley Scott, that was the different direction he was going in. So we'll get into all that, but Anthony, will you start us off with an introduction? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Anthony Self. Um, I'm a member of the Page Chewing dot com group um, i have a youtube channel called horrible where um, i play indie horror games and i have a couple of books on amazon one's a dystopian uh novel called birthday treat and the other is a collection of um short horror stories called um cat box <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you <a> got there <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh susanna uh hello my name is susanna imaginario i am a writer of uh weird fantasy or myth weird mythology let's put it this way and i run a youtube channel called den of the weird where i talk about books and movies and uh, weird stuff in general so uh so what what does what everyone because i over the years i've i've had a a, a weird a, a weird relationship with this movie <laughs> i've gone from from thinking it was okay to hating it to kind of somewhat liking it and appreciating it to watching it again, I, I'm more on the dislike side. I think this last time. But what, what did you get? How do you both feel about it? Oh, it was so much worse than I remember. I um, honestly, if it if it wasn't for this conversation, I would have stopped. I was I was in pain. <laughs> Just it was painful to watch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm going to defend it then. I, I think I'm going to be the defender of Prometheus. Um, I, I will agree with you, Steve. I, I did. Ha I had the same thing when I fir when I first watched it. Um, I I kind of came away a little bit disappointed. Um, it percolated a little bit in my brain. Uh, I rewatched it, uh, and I actually thought, you know what? It's I can see what's happening here. I can kind of see that they're veering away from the xenomorphs kind of thing. They're going to try to explain the engineers, and that in itself comes with some problems but ultimately as well it kind of uh, introduces new aspects to the franchise which i think was uh dearly needed um and uh, i think with uh, what director ridley scott was was attempting to do yeah was kind of explaining the the timeline of the xenomorphs how they came about the engineers which really is what prometheus is all about it's about their origins um, but then that also kind of, it's like the kind of um, old age thing of, you know, when you see uh, like a spooky movie, like uh, the first time you see A Nightmare on Elm Street and you have this kind of disfigured, mysterious figure, Freddy Krueger, and we know a little bit about his backstory, but you don't know too much. And then by the time you get to like the seventh or eighth or ninth version of the film, they have to kind of, you know, explain a lot of stuff, which kind of dispels the whole mystery um, about that thing. And I think that's, ultimately what Prometheus suffers from it's that thing of you you know in the first alien film you see the space jockey you see the derelict spaceship you don't know what these things are they are you know inverted commas alien uh, and then when you try to explain that it kind of loses its mysticism in a kind of respect so there is that but it does give us David the the new sort of uh, antagonist type of android to the series so well I, I only <laughs> have three things three good things to say about the movie so i'm just gonna get them out and then everything else is just gonna <laughs> be around uh no three three good things amazing visuals you know fantastic yeah. cinematography throughout um great cast i mean the actors the actors did a very good job i mean the best they could with the roles they had uh, i have, have no complaints there and one very good bit of dialogue that is when David is talking to, I forget his name, I don't even know what sort of scientist he was, uh, about uh, why the, the engineers created them and, or, or why um, humans created androids. And um, oh. he goes and says, oh, uh, because we could. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed that bit, that bit of interaction between them. Everything else um, I had issues with, it's just so many. Like you, like you said, Anthony, I think it, it, this really, the franchise really needed an, an injection of new ideas and something to 
kind of expand the world without just focusing so much on the xenomorph itself, like the the lore kind of adding to it and adding. But I, I think I think the idea I, I like the idea of it, like the to have this kind of this military installation with these with the black goo and this other stuff. I I, I think all that's really really I think I like that, but. The, my biggest complaint about this this one is the the characters. They all have the same yeah. sense of humor. I think it was because it was written around the time that Marvel was really rolling. So all the characters had that kind of snarky, uh, you know, like comebacks and everyone had funny things to say or, you know, everyone was a little bit over the top. And so I, I think the time period that this is written and I think everyone is trying to kind of craft their stories around, like kind of like that was the thing. And, um, but I think all the actors did a great job. I just think some of the dialogue is really kind of like, like, I, like at the end when, uh, Wayland is there and he's about to go into the spacecraft and, and, she, you know, Charlie Theron's character tells him, you know, father, that's like really on the nose. Like it, it's like, I don't know. It, it, there is, there's little things like that that just seemed a little bit like, like Holloway. Why was he so disappointed when they went into the ship? And they found the vases and the and the goo and I mean they found a, a, a severed head. I mean, why is he? Why is he? I don't understand why he's so distraught over that. I don't. I mean, they found it's yes. there. <clears throat> there's a there's a lot of um, characters here. A very there's a very. I think this is probably uh, the first film that had so many unlikable characters and unlikable characters in the way that um, some stupid decisions were made. Um, there was unlikable characters for the dialogue that they were coming out with. The two of my favorites were the the kind of um, the Brett and Parker of this one, uh, Milburn and Fifield. And mm. ultimately, you know, they're the ones that, you know, you could sort of argue that make stupid decisions. You know, Fifield's meant to be the guy with the pups that is meant to be tracking the, the whole interior of the, the ship. Yet he's the one that gets lost on his way back to the the kind of mother or Prometheus, oh, basically. Um, don't let me start there. Yeah, so th there's some there's some really questionable decisions that are made throughout this film, um, like especially you say like you know Vickers is playing this kind of mean spirited corporate type, and you're like, okay, yeah, uh, can see what you do with that one. Um, you know, uh, the, the, I mean, Numi Rapace's character, who's meant to be the lead one, just comes across as just a bit too, I don't know what the word is for it, fluffy? I don't know, I mean, the kind of, I know there's this theme of like her beliefs and, you know, because I choose to believe. It's meant to be like this poignant sort of part of the film, but at the end of the day, let's be honest, you've uh, allocated all these resources, uh, probably spent billions of trillions of dollars on this expedition across the galaxy um the people don't even know each other so they're kind of bringing in characters who don't even know each other there's instant um, antagonistic difference of opinions between the people and then you basically say to them like well we've just woken you up this is the reason why we're we're, we're here there's, like, what would you i mean they must have signed some premium contract in order to kind of just go willy-nilly spend xyz amount of their years of their lives in space for what they don't know until they get woken from cryo sleep and then they get told oh we've seen these kind of hieroglyphics on these walls and we think it's a kind of map to this place and we're going to find these things that maybe designed us it's like what mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly the suspension of disbelief and then they're just like utter so th those are the things that i are flawed of this film but um if you can get behind that and you can kind of go like okay right so there's a little bit of and the writing as well, I mean, it has to be said, uh, for me, feels like the kind of Lost series. And mm. it's no coincidence that Damon Lindelof is one of the writers for this. It just seems to be a lot of grandiose ideas um, that don't really have any payoff. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of themes running throughout Prometheus. You've got like on the religious theme, you've got the kind of uh, discovery of life theme. You've got, you know, uh, who is our gods and everything. Like, and so, you know, as, yeah, as you said, like when David spoke, uh, speaking to Holloway and, you know, says like, you know, we made you because we could. And then David goes like, well, you know, wouldn't that be a disappointment? And it's like, yeah, you know, we built you because we could sort of thing, basically. And it's just, yeah, everyone is so unlikable in this, in this uh, film. Um, that's yeah, because everyone is so incompetent. Who is meant to be, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I have to. I just yeah. have to get it out. Everyone yeah. is so incompetent. No, go for it. Go for it. Uh, they, they have uh, mm. the the 
ge geologist or mapper, you know, that gets lost. The biologist that goes, oh, so cute, look at this little, bilu, 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 uh, you know, what the hell was that? And it was a biologist. Um, the pilot who apparently, you know, goes down with the ship when there was perfectly, uh, it could have detached the, the life body, could have done things so many different ways, but never mind that. The scientist yeah. that, um, I don't know if she was an archaeologist, biologist, I don't know, she, she was a bit of everything. Um, that, but, but, but deep down, she was just a believer. And uh, I mean, it just, they were so incompetent at their, um, in their fields, never mind anything else. That, that was just a joke to me. Um, how? Why? <laughs> Even the, the android was a bit incompetent at being <laughs> a villain because uh, then it. I mean, I I can't. I I was almost glad. I, I kind of forgot that it got decapitated at the end, and I thought that was it. And that, but now it it just kept coming. And it's just, I I haven't even got to the ships yet. The ending, that was just a minor event. <laughs> just so incompetent. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, another kind of another another thing that I, um, I I think this wasn't much of a knee jerk reaction for me. It was something that kind of obviously, I said like percolated in the background for me. But like the ship Prometheus itself um, is this is meant to be a prequel to Alien, and the the great thing about why Alien is such a you know masterpiece of a film is that it's so, it's like the stuff with like the kind of uh, retro futuristic tech that they have on board. It's like yeah. this kind of 70s style of, you know, uh, ship mapping and everything like that. You know, you've got these big lighting flashing buttons and everything, but it's grimy, it's gritty. The Prometheus ship itself is like this kind of, you know, far ahead and in the light span of futuristic design. And I think Ridley Scott himself has kind of tried to defend that as well by saying, well, it's a kind of research festival. It's kind of, you know, personally funded by uh, Wayland sort of thing. So it, it would be in that kind of realm. It would be like a far superior ship. But it and doesn't I do even get that have to a an airlock. Extent, but I also do think, like, it kind of. Sorry, it didn't even have an airlock. Yeah. They had to open yeah, the airlock, whole you know. shape every time anyone <laughs> wanted to get in and out. What sort of design is that? A little cargo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, in that respect, I, I just kind of, it lost me a little bit on that as well. But, um, as I said, uh, after multiple viewings and whatnot, um, I do, you know, I. I do like the kind of uh, explorative nature of Prometheus that they go down to this planet. Um, they have they find this kind of installation that's built, sort of thing. I I love those kind of like type of uh, sci-fi films when you have this crew and they don't you don't really know what they're gonna find, sort of thing. And they find the engineers. Uh, well, they find the the, the some kind of released uh, pathogen or something. Uh, they bring their head back and you know try to. Um, test it and it just explodes um yeah as you said Susanna there's a lot of incompetence going through the whole crew here um but yeah and th there's a couple of things I don't like you said uh Anthony about the 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 tech it just it seems very far ahead of the first alien and mm. okay so if, if Waylon Nutani knew that all of this happened in this because LV, was it 922 is the moon to LV 426, right? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't they send someone back, like trained people back to that area to find the ship and to find the installation and everything? I mean, and plus it's still there, right? The installation is still there. Um, yeah, I mean. So th that didn't make mm -hmm. sense to me. And also when they go on the ship and they find the, the room with all the, uh, with all the canisters, on the, on the walls there's a mural of the xenomorph. But the xenomorph isn't a thing yet because it's never been, as far as we know, unless they've been testing it. Unless, but we found out later. We, we'll talk more about that probably next week with Covenant. But the the xenomorph isn't a thing yet at this point. So that was a little. And David seems light years ahead of Ash, for what Ash was in the first film, because mm. Ash seemed. Mm -hmm. You can tell that something was like he wasn't. He something was different a bit about him. Yeah. Yeah. So d David seems light years ahead when he should be. A little an uh, inferior model yeah yeah. Mm. yeah the timeline's a bit schlonky i think uh with this one um but as i think i think the main precedent was that 
since Alien Resurrection, uh, I think that there needed to be like a, a reboot of the of the show of the series, and I think it, you know it was a very deliberate decision to kind of veer away from the xenomorph yeah we're going to have a little nod of a head we're going to tip the hat slightly to the fanboys and stuff like that so you're going to have like you said like the muriel that had the the kind of hr geiger inspired designs you've got the biomechanical sort of uh, nature still there and then obviously at the very end you have the deacon um that you know they have to give you the kind of the money shot sort of thing in that respect by showing the deacon to show that there is here's the connection guys you know um but i think they could have just done more with the actual like you know the very start of prometheus you have one of the engineers uh, presumably on earth kind of thing taking a a, a, a a sort of coconut vial sort of thing of the black goo um is you know is that like a test is that meant to be like some kind of uh religious kind of te uh, test for this person because you see the hmm. ship veering off do they know that that's a sacrifice is he sacrificing himself willingly um it's never really kind of explained it's just meant to be like well this could potentially be the the design of humans on earth like the the black goo goes into the water and the waterfall and then you see the text arriving in the kind of dna sort of strands and um yeah, I think that's uh, already kind of... Um, go on, Susanna, sorry. <laughs> no, just, if that was the case, however it happened, uh, you know, if it was a willing sacrifice or if he was just left behind and he was just this way of saying, well, up yours or whatever. Um, then what was the point of the cave paintings? You know, how did the humans know that there was... Mm. that the giants were the ones that uh, created them and then knew the star system and, and all that? And how? Why? Why? Why include the, pave, the, the, the paint, the, the cave paintings at all? It's just hmm. so many plot holes. I can't. Yeah, think. I think there were probably like scenes, de deleted scenes, or I, I, I really get the feel with uh, Prometheus that there were sort of deleted scenes that should have maybe stayed in the film, because there are a lot of things that happen. Like we mentioned before about like Fifield and uh, Milburn who go into and they see that and he's, uh, you know, he's very. His character is very scared of like seeing anything. He just wants to get out of there, but then does a kind of 180 when he sees the kind of weird, um, snaky uh, sort of prototype yeah. um, worm, essentially. And I think um, I think there is a, there is meant to. I think I have sort of heard of a deleted scene where they sort of come across another sort of creature which is smaller, um, because when they kind of walk into the installation, you can see like one of their boots go down on the ground, and you see like a worm trying to get in, and that's obviously the worm that's going to get. Uh, the black goo on it so then it becomes this kind of weird serpentine creature um, but there's meant to be I think there's a scene where uh, he comes across a, a smaller creature and his confidence is mm -hmm. um, becoming to get uh, you know he's becoming more confident with approaching these specimens as such so by the time then we get to the sea monster that keep and call it sea monster it's like a little i don't know what you call it sort of thing but when he comes to it then he's like you know more galvanized to uh, introduce himself to it but still a stupid thing i think it's is it trying to do a rehack back to you know when kane goes onto the ship and looks at the egg is that their egg moment sort of thing um but yeah, I mean, it's exactly, it's, you know, I really loved that scene where it coils itself around his arm and then smashes the face. And then you see the kind of, um, that's a really good scene mm -hmm. um, to watch uh, visually. And this is a kind of, I think this is more a kind of style over substance type of film um, that everything's very pretty to look at and everything. But mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, it leaves more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Kane there is had an, the... There is an alternate scene. Oh, go, go ahead. I'm go sorry, ahead. Susan. Go ahead. I was just saying that oh, no, Kane was, was at least really had quick. the excuse that uh, he he didn't know what the, what he was looking at and he was curious, etc. The biologist should know better. You know, he was clearly displaying aggression, and he was just so enchanted. When yeah, you're right. In a few moments before, he was just let's get out of here, and uh, just oh, yeah, no sympathy. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, no, this is, uh, there is another scene or an alternate alternate scene of the beginning where there's like uh, there's robed engineers behind the engineer who looks like he sacrifices himself, and it looks like more of a ritual type of thing. So you do, you do get the feeling like it's a it's a sacrifice that he is like seeding life on this planet, and we don't really ever find out is that Earth or is that another place? Is mm -hmm. uh, so. I don't know, that's kind of the impression is that he seeded life on Earth, but then why, why take out humans after all that? Yeah, it just once again, it's 
I think there should have been <clears throat> some additional scenes where when David first um, uh, brings the engineer to life towards the end and he asks him a question, I think you can go online and you can actually see what he's asking for, which is essentially, you know, um, uh, how to make life, how to preserve life. And that's what Wayland's basically all about. That's the one reason why he's there, because he doesn't want to die. And that theme does actually touch into you know mortality and you know when you reach a certain age you start thinking about those type of things um so in that respect it is the kind of he's trying to find uh, the fountain of youth in that respect you know he thinks but once again there isn't really any kind of substantial data or evidence to suggest that these engineers can provide that mm-hmm. um you know all they've seen so far is death all they've seen so far is this black goo that they found in the vases um and even though David has his own agenda and his own sort of plan and he kind of spikes Holloway's drink uh, with just a a dab of the black goo. Um, Are we meant to think that he's acting on orders from Wayland or is he just doing his own thing? That's not really firmly established. Um, You know, and then it it just, it's it's a thinly veiled sort of plot line to kind of, you know, to keep the movie going. But, you know, Holloway, we know that Firefield's already become a monster when he returns to the ship so you would be thinking as scientists you'd be like right there's obviously some kind of virus that we've released because we've uh interfered with its atmosphere we should bring everyone into lockdown we should you know go through these things but Mm -hmm. by that point the the movie's on a roll i guess so you just have to keep on going with it with that suspension of disbelief but yeah Maybe I'm changing my own mind whilst uh, doing this. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I, I came into it to, when you to kind of push think the, the about it. of this film. When you actually think about it and start thinking. <laughs> no quarantine. Yeah. No... Yeah, I, I think David... Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Uh, but I think David dropped the goo in after talking to Wayland and Wayland told, Wayland told him, try harder, I think, when Vickers yeah. uh, confronts yeah. him. So that's... But that's an odd choice to infect someone with this unknown substance on the ship that you're on. I mean, from David's point of view, I think it's a, it's a great sort of like, he's just, I think experimenting, isn't he? He's just kind of like thinking what will happen. Like he doesn't, does he know? Like once again, does he have this data in his, you know, Android brain that will give him some sort of, uh, you know, evidence to see what happens or is he just going, ah, I'll just infect one of them. See, see how it goes. And, well, See what he, happens to them. He had a lot of knowledge. I mean, he, when he saw the the markings or hieroglyphs or whatever, they were, he seemed to be able to read them. He knew exactly where to press. How the hell did he learn that? Um, you know, it's it just it, it just knew. I think it's meant and to no be one implied else cared that about it. You know, you you are in this place. No. That yeah. first you walk in before mapping. You know, and I thought why didn't you wait for the probes to at least map the place? But never mind. You, you walk in before mapping, and you find these uh, these markings. There was there was no archaeologists there, no linguists, no one, not even taking a notepad or taking a picture, something. To, I mean, no curiosity whatsoever. And then you, you find this giant, again. Oh well, that's kind of disappointing. And you carbon dated. Not even let me go there. Um, my word. <laughs> I mean, there was no how how could we the audience buy into it or even be in awe about what we were watching seeing on screen if the the characters they were not in awe they they seemed like they didn't care they they were set on finding something that they didn't know what, what the hell it was there they they wanted to find and everything they found along the way they didn't seem to care just oh Sorry, getting angry. Yeah, I mean, it, they kind of, it's, it's, set at, it's set at Christmas, isn't it? Because Holloway goes like, um, oh, I want to open my presents kind of thing. And <laughs> I suppose, once again, it's a, it, it might have been like written in after the fact. They shoehorned it in that, you know, you'd, exactly what you said there. Why wouldn't you kind of map the whole um, installation first before mm-hmm. moving in? If it can ping life forms and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which it does later on when Firefield Milburn are sort of stuck inside when the storm is raging. Um and yeah, surely they'd just be like collecting samples. They'd be collecting this, they'd be collecting that uh, to bring back to Prometheus to kind of study. Um, they all act like little kids that got like mm-hmm. the wrong present on Christmas yeah. Day, you know? They're just all like, they've opened up their gifts and they're like, oh, 
I wanted a PlayStation 5, not like, a, you know, a, a kind of pair of socks kind of thing. And that's how <laughs> Holloway acts. You know, he just becomes mm-hmm. this like grumpy, surly teenager when they don't find a living being on this installation. But you've got these, you've got these, this whole area full up with these vases full of this organic kind of material, which you would need to kind of study. Um, but I guess then they find the heads, they bring it back and they think maybe they can get something from the head. Um, yeah. Like bring it to life yeah. somehow. Yeah, <coughs> electroshock therapy to oh, <laughs> stimulate the brain nerves. <laughs> Let's try and fool it into thinking that it's alive. Is, are you kidding me? Yeah. The uh, and I'll, so I don't want to get too in the weeds on on kind of the 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 history, but an alien when they find the ship, they talk about the 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 space jockey being fossilized that it's been there a long time. Mm-hmm. But this isn't that far away. This isn't that far before the events of Alien, so it doesn't really match up. Because it, in Alien, it seems like like an ancient ship, like that's been there for a long time. That's just been, you know, hanging out. And now, um, and now it's kind of like not that long ago. So it's it'll be interesting to see if we ever get a movie connecting all these that how they connect that. But um, the whole because they choose to believe stuff was really on the nose like i think they could have done that in a in a more of a subtle way that was more meaningful and the whole it's christmas yeah exactly what is it, like what <laughs> what like, does that have to why? do with anything christmas surpasses all kinds of safety and health sort of checks you know it's christmas you just got to roll with it and, and and when they get there they say well we have six hours before the storm hits and like well let's go explore this ship that we've traveled however many light years to get to and we'll we'll get we'll explore it in six hours. Like, mm-hmm. why not wait? Like, get, get some sleep for six hours and then come back and and you know when you have enough time mm-hmm. to go and explore and study and. Yeah, and so but they missed... totally set that up to have the whole storm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so many missed opportunities. So they had the storm. They just arrived. They could have mapped the place. Okay, excellent op- opportunity for when they were mapping the place and discovering that it was a chip, etc. You could get to know the characters a lot better each in their field are having an argument pro or against going in and how i mean that would be so much more engaging I mean, at least for me as as a viewer and then just oh let's go in pass through all these in, 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 interesting things and uh, and then come back just in time to get hit by the storm because yeah, I, oh yeah it was bad it was bad yeah, no, I agree. I think they could have they could have done a lot more to, um, you know, get, give the characters some depth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, like you know, they have um, once again that they, it's trying to sort of rehash old grounds with certain characters that you've known from previous films. So as I said, like before, like the geologist and the like, Fifield and Milburn are basically meant to be the Brett and Parker characters. You know, they're the ones that are going on their own. They seem to kind of have this kind of click. Um, you've got Vickers and Yannick, the pilot, who have this weirdly like it just it everything just comes like when he's like, you know, on his little uh, musical box thing. And he's like, are you an android? Because uh, she's so cold and aloof. And then she's like, in my room, five minutes, I'll show you that I'm not an android. It's like it just it, nobody speaks like it just it's just comes out of left field out of nowhere. And you're like, and then Yannick at the end is like, you get the impression, where does this sort of self-sacrificing spirit come from? And there's two poor co-pilots that like, he's like, go on, get off boys. He's like, they're like, nah, we'll see this one out. What? (laughs) What? No. Yeah, it just beggars belief. They, did they have too too many characters and they had to go like, right, well, yeah, we'll get rid of these guys this way. Um, You know, they'll self-sacrifice and yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Would have would have preferred like maybe six characters and all, get to know them a lot more, um, you know, so their their deaths will be more impactful. Um, it just seems yeah very inconsequential, like certain mm-hmm. things happening for this reason, for that reason, and mm-hmm. it's like then move on. Mm-hmm. Speaking of impactful, speaking of deaths. getting rid of characters, oh, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> like sheep is rolling in your direction. Uh, why do you keep running ahead? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just please t- change direction, yeah. and then, and then the other one just, just, just roll to the side. It was fine. Just, oh my 
gods. It, it, it's just for the visual effects. There's no story there. There's, there's uh, oh, we, we want to, to have this happening. So what can we do? Oh, and let's kill, you know, the, the main woman. I, I just was so stupid. Sorry. If you look at it in that kind of way as well, like Vickers is like the only sane person on this on this boat, right? Um, she like in you know after you know when you have years and years, we look at the original Ghostbusters, right? And you have Walter mm -hmm. Peck, um, who's from the um, uh, the what do you call it, the ECP or whatever it is. Like he's the only one in that film that like yeah, they they have like an ecto containment unit in this like firehouse. And there seems to be no checks. There seems to be like no things. He's only doing his job, right? He's in there to do his job. Vickers is there to do her job. And multiple times she kind of like is the only one that is the voice of reason. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought her, her death was like, she's meant to be portrayed as this kind of villainous and antagonistic person. Whereas she's the only one who's there to mitigate damage, like, you know, control. And she's there to kind of like make sure everything runs smooth and fine. And she's kind of overlooked a lot of the time from Wayland, who, like, yeah, I think was once again a shoehorn thing of, like, father, you know, king has his reign, then he dies, just accept it, pass down the things to me, and I'll carry on, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think her death was just really... Tacky. Yeah, just, as you said, like, to a visual showcase. To, yeah, and it was like, I would have preferred to see her survive, mm -hmm. you know, until the next one, but mm -hmm. I guess the writers had other plans. Oh yeah, no. Um, what's her name? I, I can't even memorize the name of the characters. She was tough, man. You know the that surgery, and then she she kept going oh, and she yeah. kept running, and uh, just <clears throat> by that point, oh, the, the amount of time I, she, I, yeah, I, I, when... I didn't care at all. I was like, yeah, she's she's gonna live until the end because of course she will. Because, but because um... <laughs> she chose to believe that she would survive. <laughs> like at the very least, and, and they made it so hard. Uh, you know. Uh, I want a C-section. Oh, no, no, this machine is not calibrated for that. You know, just just give us a little bit to work with, please. You know, <laughs> you don't just open the belly yeah, and, and take of, a squid a out and staple back in yeah. and have a shot and then you're ready to run again. I mean, come on. Oh. <laughs> I do like when they first, um, when Vickers takes Holloway and Shaw and says like, oh, I think we need to have a chat about who's actually running this operation. And then Shaw goes, oh, you've got an auto doc. Oh, There's yeah. only a couple of these in existence. Oh. I wonder if this will come up later in the film. Yeah. It's mm. like, yeah, like, come on. Uh, you know, as you said, like, this, this film does not do subtlety very well. Uh, it's very on the nose. Um, you know, like Chekhov's gun. If you see the gun there, you know it's going to get used later on. You see the auto doc. Um, once again, I will say, you know, they, they're obviously trying to find a new scene that will surpass what's gone on before, right? Mm. So when you had the kind of infamous chest bursting scene from the original film, how do we make people more queasy? How do we make people feel like really icky? We're gonna have this squid baby um, C-section happen. And, you know, for the most part, I remember when I first saw it, I, I was kind of like grimacing, um, you know, for what she's obviously going through. But then also at the same time, um, yeah, it was like the suspension of disbelief once again was taken out because like she's stabbing herself with these like EpiPens or medical pens or whatever it is. I think she goes through like five mm -hmm. before she starts spacing out a little bit. And then literally 20 minutes later, she's jumping over. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's just like those staples, I don't care who you are, would have ripped out and, you know, she would have been just like crawling on the floor. Um, towards back towards Prometheus and sort of saying like Yannick you know what you have to do um, yeah just a, it's a lot to take in you know it is visually stunning though there's a I mean if you just put it on mute and watch it's probably you know <laughs> yeah, maybe but there's that's lots the of uh, lots of great scenes like the lots of great landscapes and mm -hmm. uh, kind of set pieces and all, all of that is really you know there's some really really great scenes um, if you the, for the the surgery scene if you just take that scene just like cut it out and just watch it and forget about all the problems like leading up to that i think it is a, it is a, a cool scene but it, it always makes me grimace when the the squid baby comes out and it bursts and all that stuff goes in her stomach that's like wide up and it's like gross <laughs> but i don't know man yeah I, I hope she got some disinfectant when that happens you know yeah so, yeah yeah the the whole like um and you would think it'd be a little bit more human, right? Because it's, uh, 
Yeah, that's something I always had a problem with um, because it's obviously uh, Holloway's DNA <clears throat> mixing with the um, the goo. Um, you know, they they have their romantic time, and why would it be like a squid? Um, I don't know, maybe there was some kind of thing that went way over my head at that point. Maybe it was something to do with uh, the evolutionary goo mixed with human DNA. Um, but I do think that was a bit weird. Uh, a bit of an odd choice um, to make it like a little squid thing. They needed tentacles. And the, the Deacon end. School too, I like the Deacon. Pretty mm. much. Yeah, when it brings the uh, engineer in. Um, well, I have to say, I, I liked, again, the visuals, the designs, all br brilliant. Even the, the engineers, I, I, I thought they, they were pretty well um, designed. I mean, uh, just that, that perfection that goes just beyond what is aesthetically pleasing. I don't know, it, they, they were very creepy in their own way. Um, I wish I'd learn more about them. but. They, they weren't particularly clever. And I was here thinking, why would they want to destroy us? Maybe because we kind of turned out to be too much like them. <laughs> like, uh, uh, the end really, really annoyed me because on, on top of everything that happened, and then when David says, oh, there are other ships, and you go like, wait, what? So if, if there's other ships, why first, why would he go and try to steal the, the, the human ship? You know, because uh, it was closer, maybe I don't know. If there were other ships, why, why are, why were they still there? Because we know that one was still there because something went wrong because the virus escaped or whatever. Why were the other ones still there? Shouldn't they have com communicated at some point? Lift off, whatever. And, and what would she expect to accomplish? My, my only consolation is that you know she's just gonna die, either on on the way to the ship or trying to lift off because she has no food. No medicine, no nothing. So you know, it, I, I I hope that you know it stays there. I have I haven't watched the sequel, so don't don't spoil it for oh. me. But I, I just hope I don't have to see that oh, character again. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Very yeah. Interesting. Um, mm, okay, I, I won't say anything. To, <laughs> oh God, this is going to get worse. So <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that for for the next chat, sort of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, I think um, with Shaw's decision you know to she has that conversation with Yannick beforehand and she you know expresses the fact that um why why did they do this to us you know because as you said like maybe is is this like a statement on the world we live in today that you know they gave us the the opportunity of life and we've just basically fettered it away by being human um, so therefore they can arbitrarily exterminate us all. Like it's, it's a bit of a reach, you know, um, mm -hmm. to kind of come up with these theories without actually getting the raw data. Um, you know, they have a kind of cargo bay full of the, the vases and Yannick goes this, you know, I, you get the impression he's obviously had some military experience and he goes, I've seen these things before. This is like a weapons of mass destruction, which was obviously a bit of a buzzy buzzword sort of thing at the time um you know and it's like well we don't we don't know this mm -hmm. um but once again you're scientists like where's the data where's the evidence to suggest this is why you know they're they're planning to go to earth because obviously they see the uh the blueprint room or the um hologram room that david um sets up sort of thing and uh, we see earth but do we like we're just theorizing that they're gonna go to earth you know when the uh, engineer gets in his suit and everything like that and he starts he's about to go okay yeah we, we can understand that maybe they're going to earth but we don't really know that um you know they connect a lot of dots um mm. yeah and it's like yannick like how would he know what this installation it, there's a lot of leaps that um, mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it gets the action going you know so gotta roll with that yeah. <laughs> trying to think what else. Suddenly, uh, Alien res one. Resurrection is is looking pretty good because I know you, at least it was unapologetic about uh, you know the lack of science or character development involved or exposition. I mean, those holograms. I mean, come on, and the leaps of logic and everything. It's just talk about exposition. At least, at least be honest about it. You know, just give us a proper info dump. 
Um, don't. I, I think that's even more insulting. <laughs> I was always I was always a bit like um why when they come to like the engineering uh hologram room why the, why the flute like why do you how why oh, do you use a flute, flute to kind of I make things yeah I was expecting Oompa Loompas to kind of come walking out sort of thing when when David started you know playing with his flute um because they're so far adv- like this is the whole thing right they, they're kind of now going they're contradicting their own like writing because they they make out that these engineers are like these uh, far superior beings um and although they've got this kind of biomechanical uh you know geiger design for the the ship itself and everything like that a flute just seemed really out of place um like and the squishy uh, the squishy um, buttons and everything like that it just felt. I mean, I know it's meant to be like an alien species, um, but it just felt so removed from everything else mm. that it just kind of jarred for me a little bit. Um, that point. Um, but once again, another visual stunning uh, scene with David sort of seeing the kind of hologram and seeing Earth in the middle, being able to hold it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, not really, not really a fan of that bit. Oh, that's how they know they're going to Earth, right? Because the hologram and they see the map, so they know they're going to Earth. But yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess the main disappointment is if you are going to show the kind of engineers from the first film, from the first Alien film, and you're going to sort of show their background, then do it. You know, take more time to kind of give. Or maybe they felt like that was time enough, and they'd given the audience enough information to kind of let them know who why these beings are i don't know i think they could have gone in a different direction essentially i mean i do i do appreciate the fact that they tried something new um and although it didn't sit well with a lot of people um i can i can sometimes flutter between thinking actually yeah i do i do understand why they made a decision uh the beast is dead so to speak like what really scott's always kind of said um and then moving forward, I won't spoil anything for Covenant for Susanna. But um, yeah, and then obviously I, I would like a, a third film in this particular trilogy. If you had like Alien, Aliens, Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection as like one, that's one timeline, right? And then you've got the the newer versions, the Prometheus, the Covenant, and then the the, the third film was meant to call, be called Paradise. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, it'll. It, I would like that. I, I, I would like it to be finalized to be finished because it's meant to then you know cycle back to the derelict ship on lv426 uh that the nostromo crew find um i don't think they're going to be able to tie up all the loose ends and they're going to try and get you know this connection point to go here to make that happen in a feasible way they probably will at some point i think now with the tv show coming out and romulus coming out that's either I think that's going to be either the green light or the red light for this third film in this particular uh, com, uh, in this particular chunk sort of thing to be finalised because if, if the show does well and Romulus does well then obviously they're going to turn around and go like well yeah okay let's make this one there seems to be a more of a fan now show base of the the Alien franchise again so we'll see if it gets made um, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. So I have a question for both of you because the when the concept art for Blomkamp's ideas were public with bringing Sigourney Weaver back, basically retconning Alien 3 and Resurrection, bringing back Newt and Hicks, and having this, uh, this it was like Alien 5 it was built as. It, so when, when that was public, I think that's when Ridley Scott stepped in and said, well, hold on a second, this is my, my baby, I'm going to make what eventually became Prometheus. Would you have rather seen... Alien 5 or this prequel? Oh, well, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, um, just what you are des- describing now, and I don't remember seeing those pictures or even hearing about it at the time. But uh, it, it's kind of hard to imagine anything worse than this movie. I mean, I, I, I think I would rather either watch, like, Prometheus... If it, w- it th- there was no need to include alien in it, you know, if it was just on its own, scientists going up trying to find uh, the engineers of mankind, you know, uh, 
that's I think that would be easier, even with all the the issues with with the script and the characters and whatnot, than to because on top of all all the flaws that the movie has to kind of shoehorn the narrative into the the alien um, universe. And it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the timeline. It doesn't fit the the biology, the logic. It doesn't fit anything. That's why I call it fan fiction, which, you know, it, uh, which I have nothing against fan fiction. But I don't know. I, I think I would rather watch whatever else just out of curiosity because this did not work at all for me so mm -hmm. yeah i would have loved to have seen uh neil blomkamp's uh alien 5 film um bringing back hicks and uh newt and bishop um i think yeah suzanne as you say now like that would have i would it have been fan service for, for the greater good or would it have been fan service for the because obviously the these real life actors have aged i mean like from 1986 from the aliens mm. film to what well, this was only a couple of years ago right um so how do you explain the kind of the aging of that how do you explain you know that kind of but i i would have I, yeah obviously i would have loved to have seen that particular film um but then also i with prometheus and covenant like I think there were theories that were too grandiose for them to kind of pack into a kind of two hour film essentially. Mm. Um, and I think that got away from them ultimately. If they had of gone a certain different way with, like I said, like focusing on character development um, for Prometheus, like scaling down the amount of uh, crew that Prometheus had to kind of focus on them, um, then I think that would have been a, a, a more successful film in that regard. I think with the Neil Blomkamp Alien 5, that may have then opened up new, you know, things to discuss and talk about. And would it have just been the kind of case of getting these old IP characters in to kind of provide that fan service? Um, so I think, you know, in a parallel universe um, that really Scott said, like, no, that's fine. This is the direction it's going to go. Neil, you've got my blessing. Go ahead with it sort of thing. Um, we'd probably be sitting here now discussing that film and probably talking about its merits or its, um, you know, failings or shortcomings. And, um, but yeah, I think it would have, I would have, I would have bought, I would have paid money to see that. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Um, yeah. I was just looking it up now. It looks like uh, Sigourney Weaver was on board <clears throat> for Blomkamp's because she was, she started in Chappie, I guess his R-rated movie. Yeah. So it's suggested by Blomkamp that, he released, he kind of had this idea brewing. Uh, Ridley Scott saw Chappie and kind of put the kibosh on him that, no, you mm. won't touch it. So it's it's never explicitly said, but it looks like Scott stepped in and prevented it from happening, which is... It's interesting as well with, with Scott at the moment because he seems to be, you know, they return to them Blade Runner. So he's got these, um, you know super fantastic films of like from his catalog you've got like alien blade runner they they seemed like you know denny villeneuve came back with 2049 that seems to be kind of there seems to be like a whole new universe opening up for that now we see the same thing with alien with the tv show with the romulus film um you know that he's seen and now he's making gladiator 2 as well it's like he seems to be going back to these old iconic films and sort of making sequels for them and it's it kind of makes me think like why yeah why do that like leave the things as like gladiator in itself is a brilliant film master masterpiece kind of thing um there, there's no need for a sequel um i i shudder to think that there's going to be a scene where russell crowe's maximus is going to be like some kind of angel in the skies just like you know ah uh, it, it does i mean it's not looking good like he loves his bio uh biopics like napoleon i saw recently hmm and uh you know once again he does visually he's one of the uh, auteurs of of his field like he's a great great director and he's he, he loves he gives spectacle um to audiences i just don't think you can leave certain films for what they are uh leave the iconic you know films of the past as they are don't besmirch their status and their kind of 
credibility by then making these sequels that are always going to be inferior to a certain degree. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, I found that uh, Alien 5 would have retconned, so Alien 3 and Resurrection would have been a send off for Ripley and Hicks and would have made Newt the new heroine of the franchise. Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, you've got the Alien Isolation game that has Ripley's daughter, mm. uh, Amanda. And I think, I think I've said this before, um, that that for me would be the way to go. That would be the logical way to go would be to have a kind of new universe with Amanda Ripley um, searching for her mum. I mean, you've already got like the, the first bit, the game, if you've played the game or know of the game of Alien Isolation, uh, Amanda Ripley goes off because they found the black box of the Nostromo and um, she goes off to this uh, Sylvester Ball station to find the black box. She, she does. Um, but then there's more questions there. And we haven't seen the last of Amanda Ripley as well. So whether Alien Isolation 2 is in production or it comes out or whatnot, um, there seems to be a resurgence with the Alien front, like Alien Dark Descent, the games anyway, at least. Uh, Alien Dark Descent uh, is a kind of tactical sort of um, real, uh, real-time real strategy sort of game where you're playing as Marines who, who crash land on this planet and they have to basically get resources to get their um, uh, ship up and running. Um, but yeah, I think passing the baton down or across or whichever way you pass the baton, um, I think Amanda Ripley would be the way to go. Um, Newt would have been would have been a great fit as well, definitely, yeah. I mean, the kind of novelizations of the books and stuff like that, you've got the Earth War series that kind of focuses on Hicks or Wilkes um, because of, obviously, copy, uh, uh, infringement of, of the characters or whatnot. They had to change the character name, so it was Billy and Wilkes hmm. rather than Newt and Hicks. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that would have been the, I think that's the, the logical way to go, would have been focusing on the, the younger characters. But as we see on the Romulus, they're all going to be young, mm. young cast. So, yeah. Rooting for the aliens in that one. Looks like that. It's gonna be, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you, you haven't seen Covenant, Susanna? No. I was mm. so disgusted with this one. <laughs> Never got around to, to see the next so Steve, what do you think um, for the next one when Susanna watches it? I think I think <laughs> your I think Susanna, your opinion's gonna be possibly even lower than Prometheus. Oh please don't tell don't me it know. gets worse. Oh, I don't know. I think it, it's I don't want, I, but I don't wanna say too much. I don't wanna give anything away, but I think I think there'll be there will be elements that you that you'll like. But mm. overall you I don't think you'll hate it, but I don't think you'll love it either. I think it'll be kind of mm. in the middle. Because uh, honestly, the, it doesn't get much worse than this. I I, I really dislike the movie. I, I I was in pain watching it. I could feel my brain cells just just dying uh, with uh, just the dialogue, the the leaps in logic, the the interactions between the characters. That so many missed opportunities. I was itching. It's like please just do something about it. From from a narrative perspective, uh, it was such a waste, you know and. Uh, it wasn't for lack of budget and it wasn't for lack of uh, good actors. I mean, they could have done something so much better, in my opinion. And and, and I know I, I sound, you know, mm. quite, um, I don't even know the word, presumptuous or, I don't know. I, I don't like when I get into this mindset of trying to fix the story. It's something that I do more as a, an exercise for my own writing and, and just, and I, I don't like doing that to other stories because they, I like to leave them alone. They are what they are. But in this case, it was pretty much every scene. It's like, why are you doing this? You know, And it turns out that there was no reason. It was, things just seemed to happen, disconnected. Um, and they kept happening, you know. Um, I, I really have a, an issue with these super strong characters, you know, at least make them, you know, superhero or gods or aliens themselves. You know, even just a simple insert saying that someone, you know, info dumping or saying, oh, some of the, the alien DNA got into your system. So you, you, you're you going to feel some changes. You know, anything. It would, it would help just get over the... Because she, she, she would be dead like 10 times over. You know, it's just... It's, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because that just popped something in my head. Um, in the Dark Horse comics, um, there is uh, there's a sort of um, 
I can't remember the storyline of there's a couple of storylines where they introduce like royal jelly they call it royal jelly um which is like from the aliens um dna sort of thing it, essentially when you ingest it sort of thing it makes you super strong mm -hmm. it makes you like go crazy like there's a there's one storyline in particular that they have like these like olympic games and one of the runners like steroids up on the royal jelly and he just goes bombing he like surpasses but he can't stop running and he kind of just runs and splats himself against the wall because he's so like <laughs> so i think that would have been a, a good sort of way to go like you know maybe someone on board the prometheus kind of knows that, that you know like d someone like david for example uh who gets the black goo but like, there could have been something else that they could have got that makes them you know makes humans super strong and that could have been the the link for like wayland for his like fountain mm -hmm. of youth um elixir so to speak so they could have they could have done stuff like that they could have introduced that into the mix which i think would have been um but like as you were saying susanna like i don't want to kind of like look at uh programs on tv or films and try mm -hmm. as i'm going through it editing it myself and saying that this is what i would have done this is what i would have yeah. done here sort of thing and i think once again it comes down to the writing um i'm not a fan of uh Lindel, a lot of lindelof's stuff um because i said like he some he introduces some great ideas but that's all they are it's like a theorized idea that never really pans out correctly um you know everyone who watched lost and as i said like before felt gypped at the end uh felt like it was a bit of a cop-out because they introduced this thing this cool thing this cool thing this cool thing how are we going to answer this don't worry about it we'll, mm -hmm. we'll figure out later this thing this new thing and that's kind of what prometheus is as well like you know they, there's like all these kind of set pieces that are really interesting to look at and really interesting to see but then the the actual people that are in that particular environment do not act like people in a real life scenario exactly. you know i mean you can all right once again suspension of disbelief you can say in a horror movie you know when someone knocks at the door you, they go running upstairs and all that kind of stuff rather than uh, or when there's a scream in the in the house they go running up to find out what it is rather than calling the authorities or trying to escape um so there is a certain sort of film logic i guess that you have to adhere to um for these things to take place and for the for, for the scene to get from point a to point b to point c um but in this one there's just too many of them you can forgive one or maybe two missteps um or leaps in logic but then when you have like three or four all combined in a row then you start going come on guys you need to you need to fix this kind of thing so yeah 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 and i, I think really scott intended that at the beginning we talked a little bit about how i feel like marvel the success of that time period and changed like the kind of the characters all have like this, you know, funny, sarcastic personality. Um, I think also really Scott wanting to connect his Blade Runner movies to this one, kind of start to meld them together. That was another thing at the time of like, oh, let's have a multiverse and let's connect everything together and it'll be great. So I don't know why everything has to be universe these days. Why does everything have to be a shared universe of this, that, and the other? I like when you, you know, you have directors that will, um, like I said, like Blade Runner and the Alien franchises kind of mixing together. And outside of it, when you have like the comics or when you have like novelizations kind of thing, when they do it, that's fine. Like, as you said, like, you know, the whole um, Star Wars thing at the moment, like, they've retconned the whole um, sort of uh, the... The comics based on the films they got rid of that whole universe kind of thing because it was canon and stuff like that and um they actually the the really lambusted uh, aliens colonial marines game that's meant that's canon that they've mm -hmm. they went on this whole like hyper thing of like this is the this is the next uh type of um film and franchise set just after aliens it is canon it's been it's official and it's like fans will know like they'll be like no, it's not not really I don't believe that. I don't. I don't take that. I'm saying no. Um, so yeah, I don't know why everything needs to be like a shared universe now. Just have its own. Make it its own thing. And I know why because of the money. You know, it's it gives it gets the bums on the seats and it gets more money for the studios and everything like that. But um, I think it needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Kind of feel like those days are starting to come to an end with the with the lack of success of a lot of those movies. I think that's we're moving away from that kind of thing. Hopefully, yeah. Well, it's, it's already happened with Marvel sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know, so um, everyone's just, uh, every kind of franchise, you know, it has a bubble, like, you know, the zombie films that came out sort of thing back, way back, um, 
you know, the late sort of uh, early 60s or whatever sort of thing, late in, going into the 70s, they had these cycles. So I think um, there's that whole thing, isn't there? I can't remember what the technical name is for it, but like they'll say like fashion, for example, has like a 10 year cycle. Things that you like bell bottoms might come back into in, in sync, like, you know, in the next couple of years, whatever, like stuff like that. Films are the same, like uh, themes of films, genres of films. You have like the kind of 90s thriller, sort of like the courtroom dramas that, you know, you'll get like a, a slew of and then you know after a certain time and i think like with alien resurrection when was that that was um 1992 uh, resurrection, resurrection was 97 98 97 sorry uh, i was thinking of alien 3 sorry um yeah and then you know you had the aliens versus predator ones as well in between this sort of thing but this is meant to be like the the prequel sort of like now and that was what that was 20 2009 uh, i think it's 2012 Mm-hmm. 2012 yeah. so you had like a massive gap in between you know we're not counting the alien versus predator films but we had a massive gap between alien resurrection and now prometheus um so i think yeah it was time like we needed to kind of re-enter the world of the xenomorphs and of the characters and stuff like that and once again as i said like i i, I really enjoyed the first 40 minutes of this film um i really enjoyed the the explorative nature of these scientists going off to this you know uh, alien land to kind of find out when they enter the facility or the installation sorry and you know i think the first red flag was the oh it's breathable air down here let's just take off our helmets like no man come on Uh i know obviously they're these like big bulky sort of 50 style of helmet type of thing and they in filmically doesn't look good if they're wearing Mm -hmm. them all the time but yeah, that was I think that was the, the start of the bad decisions. Hmm. Uh, yeah, just uh, really quick before we wrap up, I just I noticed now that uh, I was looking for information on Blomkamp's uh, video or his uh, ideas, but it looks like the new uh, Fox, the new FX show, the alien show is ignoring the Prometheus timeline. So... Oh. Their, their show will just be uh, one through yeah. four, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, um, once, as we said, if this, if this third film of this particular trilogy gets made, um, that'll wrap things up. And then I think it's going to, you're going to have to look at the future. You know, you can't, and what every, everything that's kind of come before it, um, use that as a blueprint, but then you need to, cre- they need to create something new. Um, and uh, I only hope they can. Yeah, they have we'll plenty see. of material. <laughs> just, just use it correctly. Just, you know. Yeah. <sighs> Definitely. <laughs> As we find next week to talk Covenant, I'm really, really mm. excited to see what... Susan You're guys scaring me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's better than Prometheus. Okay, okay. At least that. I, I have I, I don't think I can say anything because I, I know what I'm like I'll just start spoiling things so I, I'll r- remain my lips firmly sealed until uh, yeah. that point I mean I, I I know about the whole thing that you know <clears throat> humans were actually the ones that creating the aliens I, I know I know that I don't know how they're gonna get there I, I yeah surprise me should, should should be interesting I'll, I'll just I'll just say this, and without any not, not spoil anything. When I saw it in the theater, I walked out really disappointed because I had mm-hmm. expectations that were really high, and I wanted it to be like a, a course correction from Prometheus. But when I came back later, and I just said, "Okay, I'm just going to watch this, and just enjoy it for what it is, and just forget about everything, and just just watch it," I enjoyed it a lot more. When I just was like, drop my expectations, what I wanted to happen, what I thought should happen, just like this is what it is, and I'll just watch it and. So I enjoyed it a lot more after. So. Okay. <laughs> I will agree with Steve. That's not very encouraging. Is it? That is that no, that that is hopeful. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, like I said, the expectations are quite low, so chances are I'll I'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be a good one. I'm excited. <laughs> well, cool. Uh, yeah, be, that's yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be really fun. So in the meantime, uh, Anthony, where can people find you? 
Um, people can find me on pagechewing.com uh, where there's a whole bunch of cool people talking about a whole bunch of cool things. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is Horrible, um, which uh, I mainly play um, uh, independent horror games, but also do a couple of film reviews and TV show reviews. And um, yeah, and I've got some books out on Amazon. One's called Birthday Treat and the other one's called Bat Cat Box and Other Strange Stories. Yeah, so I'll have all those links in the description. And uh, Susanna? Uh, you can find me on the page doing forums as well, uh, on my YouTube channel, Den of the Weird, and on X. Yes, I'm still there. Uh, hanging. <laughs> hanging. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm still there. And uh, you can find my books. Uh, the series is Timelessness pretty much everywhere. And I have a new book coming out in March, uh, available for pre-order on Amazon, called Oublié. I have my pre-order ready to go, so I'm, I'm all so, set. Yeah. So cool. So uh, until next week, we'll talk to everyone soon. Okay. Till next time. Bye. Bye.